Psalm 118 begins, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let us say, His steadfast love endures forever. Good morning and welcome to worship together, Easter Sunday worship together with Grace and Leland United Methodist Churches. We're so glad to be able to have the opportunity to gather today on, on this, the most high and holy of Lord's days, this most wonderful day of resurrection. And so it's great to gather together with you and, and we pray that, that as we meet the resurrected Lord today, your life would be different and my life would be cha different and we would all be changed, to be changed into those who are following Jesus Christ. And that we would take our full, our, our, our full inheritance together as God's people, as God's children in Christ. As we gather together today, we remember those who we pray for, uh, those who are still fighting on the front lines of the pandemic, those who are carrying the items across, those truckers who are carrying things uh, across our country and getting things to where we need them when we need them. And for those who are on the front lines in the grocery stores, I thought about that this week, that we need to lift them up and pray for them, how we would, we would pray for those who are working daily and uh, that we might be able to have food to eat. And, all, and everyone else who are working at all the essential things that are going on around us in the medical, in the medical profession and, and, and school systems. Uh, we pray for the teachers who continue to teach in the midst of... of uh, this pandemic and doing it online and we pray for the parents and we pray for the children and we pray for all those who are who are still uh, in their homes and 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 uh, doing what we need to do to get through this but we come together in prayer and we pray certainly for those who are on our regular prayer list and we pray for every day but we also pray for we pray for those who are on our hearts even now and if there's those who are on your hearts, we ask you to lift them up now as we go to a time of prayer. And we'll begin with a short period of silence and then a time of prayer. Lord, hear us as we pray and we lift up people before you today who are in our hearts, people who may be ill, people who may be recovering, people who may be injured people who, for whatever reason, may have gone through an emotional loss and, and need your real presence. And Lord, so Lord, we call out to you for them. And as all, all of your gathered children here have lifted up before you, um, people who we love, we know that you, we, and we thank you ahead of time for how you will hear our prayers and you will and, and, and you will show us your presence and that we might uh, give you thanks and uh, glorify your name. And so we give thanks to you, O oh Lord, for the resurrection that we find together in, today in Jesus Christ, that, that, that the tomb was empty and that, that, that Jesus is alive, and God, that is your power at work in the world, that though he, were, he was dead, he's now alive. Lord, we thank you for the life that you give us in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the, the life that you have intended to, for us uh, in all times, what we know about, because we learn of and hear the teachings of our Lord and Savior, and we listen for your word to come to us through the scriptures and through prayer. And so, Lord, we thank you that you come to us. We thank you that you love us and love us with a love that we can't even imagine. We thank you for pouring out on us this day such marvelous gifts in this day of resurrection, on this Easter day. Be with us all as we celebrate and stand together and celebrate your son's resurrection, which is a reminder to us of our own resurrection in you and new life in you. We thank you, God for these and all your gifts. And we pray now the prayer that 
your Son and our Savior Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Today we have a culmination of a groaning that the earth has been in for such a time. We've been indoors for about a month now it seems. And maybe some of us even longer. And there's sort of a groaning of wanting to, to come to a sense of new life. Imagine what it was like for the disciples to come through this past Holy Week. And imagine what it's like for us to walk together with Christ through that Holy Week. And there's a sense of groaning that comes in Good Friday and a silence that comes on Holy Saturday. But then, early on the first day of the week, they go to the tomb and find that though he had been laying low in the grave, up from the grave, Jesus arose. Sing 
just because he lives. If this were a normal Easter Sunday, we would be gathering, passing the peace, shaking hands, saying, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But this isn't a normal Easter Sunday. Let's talk about another tradition. On Easter Sunday, we would be celebrating communion. The minister would say to the congregation, we proclaim the mystery of faith. And the congregation would respond, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Soak that in for a moment. The mystery of faith. You don't have to know how this works. You'll probably never fully understand all that it means. But the mystery of faith means that even if you don't fully understand, you never stop inquiring, considering, dwelling on what that means, this profession of faith. Christ has died. Not was sick, not was in a coma. Christ died. We spend Good Friday to Easter morning feeling that. Then, Easter morning, an empty tomb. Christ is risen, and with him, me and you. We are Easter people at an empty tomb faced with another mystery. Christ will come again. This is a broken world, but we have not been left behind. Our Redeemer lives and is coming back for us. The profession, this mystery of faith, I don't know, I believe.
Scripture reading for this Easter Sunday is from Matthew 28, 1 through 10, the resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So the so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And thanks to Hobson for reading for us today out there in the open with birds singing and in the beautiful uh, green greenery around. And he read the scripture of early on that first, first day of the week, that first Easter. And we got to hear it from this young one from our from our church and so we're, we're so grateful Hobson that you would do that for us and you would lead us in worship today we're always grateful when our young people lead us in worship but today is even more special day in that today Easter happens to fall on Hobson's birthday and so we say happy birthday to Hobson and appreciate you reading for us today come and see you know to see and to be seen is some of the most important things, most primal things of, in, in our lives and who we are as human beings. I remember a game we used to play with our kids when they were growing up. We'd go, boo, I see you. And, uh, and not for the, not for the uh, trying to scare our children, but I see you. I see you. And, and they would respond with giggles they were suddenly surprised because you were behind the hands and then out from behind the hands and then and then they heard that you saw them it's so important to see to know you're seen to see and be seen it's so primal important to our lives um, it's so important especially this in this time uh, to be able to see one another when we can. If we're riding down the street, we see someone, it kind of lifts our day, people we haven't been able to see because we've been out and away and we've not been with other folks. We had a, a, an online uh, meeting of our confirmation class this week and one of the things that we said is we all came online and everybody was on my iPad and we were looking at each other and, and I said, gosh, it's good to see you. And they said, it's, it is good to see each other it's good to be together and to be seen it's good to see and to be seen I remember 
Uh, when Katie was little, she would be riding around on a little tricycle in the yard and or or whatever she was doing, she would say, look at me, Daddy, look at me. How important it is to see and to be seen. Come and see. Come and see this Jesus who saw a woman at the well and saw into her life and she saw his life and he changed her life and she went into town and came back and said come and see a man who told me everything that I'd ever done come and see there's a blind man who Jesus took mud and put it on his eyes and though he had been blind from birth as you remember we talked just a few weeks ago about then he could see and they said, how did he do this? He said, I don't know. But I do know that I was blind. But now I see. We come to the garden this morning. There are two Marys, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, as Matthew says it. And they come to the garden to see the tomb. They're coming to, the word for it is more like keep vigil and to see the tomb where God and Jesus Christ they felt lie dead. They came to see and to maybe even find something that which they'd lost. This Jesus who they saw on the cross. They saw him die. But they came to see Maybe it's like we who, when we've lost someone, continue to maybe think we see them coming around the corner or someone like them. They came to see the tomb. And when they arrived at the tomb, it says that suddenly, as they came to see the tomb, suddenly, that's one of two times this happens, this word suddenly comes up in the text. It's, a, it's an abrupt uh, change in the story. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And uh, I've never been in an earthquake myself, or at least been close enough to one that I felt it. I know that there have been earthquakes around, but it said suddenly there came upon them a shaking of the earth, a, a, a seismological shaking of the earth. And for an angel of the Lord had descended down from heaven and came back, came down and rolled away the stone. And he, they say the angel looked like lightning. And so this lightning angel comes and splits existence and comes in to where Christ who was dead, they had seen him die. They were witnesses to it. They had seen him die. And suddenly an earthquake and an angel like lightning coming down rolls away the stone and is bright as you can imagine. And the guards who were at the tomb fell down as though they were dead. They came to see and what the first thing they found was something that was terrifying and so this thing first thing they found uh, was was something that would lead them to fear but the angel spoke to them and to the women and said do not be afraid that's a great message for us today and every day that we don't need to be afraid even though there are times when we come through life that we are terrified. We need not be afraid. Even the one who comes in and makes men fall down out of fear, like dead men, the angel, says, don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus. That's another version of seeing. You are looking for Jesus. A few nights ago, I was up in the middle of the night 
around two in the morning, I guess I would say, I was looking for John's machine. Now John's machine is the little controller. He calls it his machine, but it's the little controller that controls his blood sugar pump, his insulin pump for his blood sugar. His alarm was going off. I rolled the sleep off of my head and got up and went to where I thought the machine was in his room. I went into his room to check on him and the, the alarm was going off and I looked and I looked for this thing that I had, that last place I thought I'd put it, and I, this thing that I had. And I was coming back by our room from John's room, and Lynn says, did you find it? I said, no, I didn't find it. And so I went into the dining room. I went into the kitchen. I went into the den. I went all around looking for, looking for John's machine. Now, the good part of the story is I, when I came back into John's room, I found it where it should have been. That's why I couldn't find it, because it was where it should have been. But I found what I was looking for. When the angel of the Lord says, you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, that word looking has the connotation and the, and the feeling about it um, like someone who is looking for something that is lost. They said, you are looking for Jesus who you saw crucified. He is not here. He has been raised from the dead. And this morning as we gather around the world, there has been a church in groaning, but this morning we stand and, and realize that what we see and what we have seen in our life is that Christ is alive, not simply because we've come to all the Easter services, but we know that God is a God of resurrection and brings new life. He has been raised, as he said. And then the angel says, Come and see. See the place that where he had lain, where he lay. And so they came and they saw. And I think maybe what God is calling us to do today is to realize how important it is for us to come and to see and to witness the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There was a suddenly a terrifying moment and they came to look for Jesus and they saw that he was not there. That he'd been raised from the dead. And suddenly then, it says Jesus met them there and said, Greetings. Can you imagine what it would have been like having been with someone you loved so dearly and walked with and, and had learned from and grown from and learned to love so dearly and to see them terribly killed on a cross? and had a day of silence during the Sabbath, just aching over the loss, and going at least just to look at the place where he lay. But then, suddenly, suddenly, Jesus was there. And they saw him. And he said to them greetings, and, he, and they came to him, and they took hold of him around his feet and worshipped him. I was thinking I was talking to my mom a few days ago and she had been close to she hadn't been around anyone but she had been close to some of the grandchildren who came up and grabbed her around her legs. You know, trying to keep social distance but how are you going to stop children from grabbing you around your legs? I remember when there was a preschool in the church where I served in New Albany years ago and, and, and what it was like to have children come grab you around your legs. And that's the image that I see when these two Marys see Jesus. They run to him and, and, and embrace him. Embrace him and worship him. Then Jesus said to him, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there 
they will see me. The good news of the gospel today of Easter is not only do the, those disciples go to Galilee, that appointed place, and see him, not only did the, the disciples, these two Marys, come looking for Jesus and he come and encounter them, but we in our lives have the opportunity as we are, are looking for Jesus. Or maybe we're even saying, look at me, Jesus. Because he would do that because he loves us that much. But as we go and, and we're maybe even struggling in life, if maybe you're even struggling in life and, and that you, you need to be seen by Jesus and to see him. The, the gospels that we have are eyewitness accounts of those who saw Jesus. And the scriptures tell us that more than 500 people at one time saw Jesus alive and resurrected. Come and see, the scriptures invite us. Come and see. Come looking for Jesus and you will see him. He will meet you there. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter to everyone. Uh, as we stand together as people of faith in Jesus Christ, as we stand together on this Easter and we celebrate the resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord. May God be with you. May God keep you safe. May God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May God lift up his countenance upon you. And may God give you peace.
you